Hello and welcome to Tribe Topper. In this video, you are going to learn the topic 2.1 from mechanics, and that part is motion for IBHL physics. The first thing that we need to understand when we talk of motion is the term distance and the displacement. Now, what is distance and what is displacement? So, supposedly, we go from point A to another point B. There can be three different routes. You might go from A to this and then here and then to B. You might go straight from A to B or you might take another path which is even longer and take this route. So I'm marking them 1, 2 and 3. So along all the three routes, the distance is going to be different but displacement is going to be same. So what does this tell us? That distance, how would we define distance? Distance is the actual length of the path covered. Like in all these three cases, the path covered is different and so the length of the path is also different. But displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and final positions. So it doesn't matter what route you follow. The shortest distance is the straight line distance between A and B. So that will only be the length of this path. So displacement in each case, whether you follow the route 1, 2 or 3, the displacement in each case is just the shortest distance AB between the initial and final. Whereas distance is, the, uh, distance is different in path 1, 2 and 3 because the length of each path is different. Now, the unit would be same for both. This also has the SI unit meters and that displacement also has the SI unit to be meters because at the end of the day, they both are the lengths. Now, as an example, if I say you come back to the same position, so you went from A to B and then you come back to the position A. Supposedly, you cover 2 kilometers going and 2 kilometers coming back. Then in this case, your distance covered would be 2 kilometers plus 2 kilometers, that's 4 kilometers. And displacement would be 2 kilometers minus 2 kilometers, that is 0. When I said minus, that means that displacement can be negative as well. And when is it negative? That depends on the direction. So if going from left to right was positive, then coming back from right to left will be negative. So we can say, that distance is what it is a scalar quantity distance is a scalar quantity because it has only magnitude direction does not matter that's why 2 plus 2 gave me 4 but for displacement it is a vector quantity as we've already learned in the first unit vector quantity is the one which has magnitude and direction both and since displacement has direction so it can be positive as well as negative and it can be zero as well okay now the distance and displacement after learning about this we come to the next important term that terms that will be speed and velocity now we all know when we are traveling we see the speedometer of a car tells us at what speed are we driving so what is it telling you if it says 80 kilometers per hour it tells you you are covering 80 kilometers in one hour so this speed would be distance upon time so speed is distance over time that means distance traveled in a given time so generally the unit we use for the speeds of the car is kilometers per hour but that's not the standard unit si unit for speed would be meter per second and velocity is just as the difference we had between distance and displacement so similarly we'll have a difference here between speed and velocity velocity uh, in layman terms can be same uh, speed as speed but in terms of physics we would say velocity is speed plus direction so velocity is actually a vector quantity so that would rather be displacement over time so just as speed is distance over time velocity will be displacement over time so speed is a scalar quantity because it has both terms distance and time as scalar so the result is speed which is also a scalar but velocity is a vector quantity because it depends on displacement which is a vector so velocity also has direction this means that therefore velocity can be positive it can be negative and it can be zero right so zero is the case when we learn about the average velocity so speed and distance i hope the difference is clear 
So let's learn about some values where we have instantaneous and average values. Like you all know, the speedometer of your car, you know that needle of your speedometer keeps jumping between 0 to 20, 40, 60, 80. That means it is all the time telling you what is the speed at that very instant. So what should be instantaneous speed or instantaneous velocity? It is the velocity at a particular instant. Right? So, if you are talking of at 2 seconds or at 3 seconds, that velocity will be called as instantaneous velocity. But the average values are, like if you go for a long journey and you try, you are driving a distance of 300 kilometers and each 50 kilometer stretch you drive at different, different speeds. So, we rather prefer to find an average value. So, average value would refer to an overall value, what would be like give us the best estimate of your actual speed. So, we will say average value of the speed would be the total distance that you traveled upon total time you took. So, we can of course uh, omit the timings that you took for rest but otherwise for the average speed we will say the total distance that you travel over total time taken. That is called the average speed and we generally need these values when the velocity is a variable one because if your velocity is constant then it is not a problem because it is same everywhere. But if the velocity is changing continuously at different different times, you have different values of velocities. So, we have to uh, take into account the instantaneous and the average values. And since now we are going to talk about the motion for which the speed is not constant, that will be an accelerated motion. That is called, so there comes the term acceleration. So, let's talk about acceleration. So, we say suppose u is the initial velocity and v is the final velocity and this velocity is gained in a time t, then what will be the acceleration? Acceleration is actually defined as rate of change of velocity. That means how fast the velocity changes. That is acceleration. So, therefore, we can say acceleration is nothing but the change in velocity over time. And obviously, how will you find the change in velocity? That will be the final velocity minus the initial. So, that's v minus u and divided by time gives us the rate of change of velocity. So, that is acceleration. Now, what about the unit of acceleration? As you can see, it is basically representing the velocity in the numerator. So, it will be meter per second for velocity over second. So, it becomes meter per second square. But do remember one thing that acceleration will be there. That means it has a non-zero value only when the velocity changes, right? If the velocity does not change, in that case, if velocity does not change, in that case, we would say the change in velocity is 0, v minus u is 0, then a would also be 0. <clears throat> so, we have to remember no change in velocity means no acceleration. Change in velocity means there is an acceleration. And what do we call these types of motions? If the velocity is a constant, that means acceleration is zero. We call it as a uniform motion. So, whenever we talk of uniform motion means we are talking of a constant velocity and zero acceleration. And if velocity is a variable one, then your acceleration is non-zero and that motion is called a non-uniform motion motion. So, your motion on the road is generally a non-uniform motion. We hardly get an empty road where we can drive with a constant speed or constant velocity, right? Now, because we have already spoken of all these terms, the distance s and the distance or displacement is denoted by s and u as initial velocity, v as final velocity, a as acceleration and t as time taken, then we have three equations which are known as SUVAT equations. SUVAT means which relate all these uh, parameters. So, the first equation which you would need in solving the problems is v is equal to u plus a t. So, out of these four, even if you know three variables, you can always find that out. While using this equation, I will give you a tip here that if the body starts from rest, right? If a body starts from rest, you don't need to worry about 
the initial velocity that is automatically zero. And if a body was already in motion, but finally body stops, right? If a body stops finally, it was moving with some velocity. In that case, your final velocity is going to be zero. And the same equation, if you have to apply it in vertical motion, how will it change? In vertical direction, you generally have a case of dropping a ball or dropping something. So in vertical motion, remember the following tips that U would be zero and A would always be the acceleration due to gravity, which is G. So therefore, your equations would be V is equal to U plus GT. <clears throat> Mostly, U will be zero. But sometimes it may not happen. So you can say P is equal to U plus GT. That's our first equation of motion. The second equation is S is equal to UT plus half AT square. So this equation is the one which relates the displacement. So if you have, if you know the initial velocity, you know the acceleration and time, you want to find the displacement, you can use this equation. And for vertical motion, again, just remember that S would change to height because it's the vertical height, u will be ut plus half gt square. But please remember, you will use g as plus g if the motion is in the downward direction and you will use g as negative g if you have thrown something upward. So while going up, please always consider g to be negative. Then the third equation, the third Suvat equation is V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. So if you know the initial or final velocities, you can always found, find the acceleration and the displacement stuff. Now here again, the same tip. If you are talking of uh, starting from rest, U would be zero. Stopping finally, V would be zero. That is the same tip as we used earlier. But another thing you can add here is that in vertical motion, when this equation changes to v square minus u square is equal to 2gh <clears throat> because a would be g, the acceleration due to gravity in vertical motion and s would be h, the height covered. So here you have to remember at the highest point, like if you throw something, it obviously reaches at a highest point and then it starts falling down. So at the highest point, your velocity V, final velocity will always be considered to be zero. And again, the same thing, G would be negative G when you are th throwing something up and G would be positive G when something falls down. So these are the three equations of motion. And in the next example, let's see how to use these equations. So here the example says that a cyclist slows uniformly from a speed of 7.5 meters per second to a speed of 2.5 meters per second. While reading the question, you come to know that he slows down from a speed of 7.5 meters per second, which means your initial speed is 7.5 meters per second. That's you. And it slows down to a speed of 2.5 meters per second means your final speed is 2.5 meters per second in a time of 5 seconds. So t is 5 seconds. And they ask you a simple question. What is the acceleration? We just talked about the three equations of motion. So a, the acceleration that you'll derive from the definition, in fact, V minus U over T. It simply gives you 2.5 minus 7.5 upon 5. So 2.5 minus 7.5 is negative 5 upon 5. So solving this, we get minus 1 meter per second square. And we know our answer is correct because the thing is that the cyclist is slowing down. So your acceleration should definitely be negative. A negative acceleration indicates that the object is slowing down. <clears throat> and now in the P part, they say find the distance moved in 5 seconds. We have the acceleration. So we can easily find out the distance move now. You can use any of the two equations, whether you use um, uh, v square minus u square is 2as or you use s is equal to ut plus half at square. Any equation can be used here. So s is equal to ut means 7.5 times t, that is 5, plus half times, uh, plus half times 2.5 times 5 square. So let's multiply and find an answer.
So we get 37.5 plus 31.25. And when you add these two, we get 68.75 meters. That is the distance covered. So I hope you understood how to use the, what are the three equations and how to apply those SUVAT equations depending on the question. That's all. In the next video, we are going to talk about projectile motions.